Hey guys, Samurai here, and I'm back with another episode of the Pokemon Sword and Shield series, Champions Road. Where we last left off, the group had just made it to Stoan's side and defeated a G-Max Anaconda that was ravaging the land with the help of the gym leader B. Now, the Sinnoh Festival is getting underway. We've seen characters return like Rowan, Cynthia, Barry, and Don as his previous traveling companion. Now, Chase, Hop, and Bead are all going to be entering a tournament in a hope that they can fight the Sinnoh champion in a one-on-one -on -one exhibition match, Cynthia, along with Ash, Rinto, and Lucas being referees for that battle. There's sure to be a lot of fun moments in this battle, and at the end of the episode, we will have the gym battle between the main trio against B and Alistair. With all that being said, let's get started. Now, before the tournament happens, the crew do do some sightseeing. Ch Elaine, Marnie, and Peonia are looking around looking around at the different delicacies of the Sinnoh region, and eventually come across Don's booth. Don is explaining how contests work in the Sinnoh region and how the Sinnoh region are famous for them. She explains how she, how she came in second place in the Grand Festival and is looking to take first place this year. Ash is also here watching the performance and saying that he traded a good amount of his Pokemon to Don just so they could do contests as well, and he's actually entered a contest or two. They're really fun and he hopes that they get to try it at some point. After this contest showcase is done, the tournament gets directly underway. Chase is very excited to prove himself in a battle setting where Ash and Elaine aren't holding him back necessarily, and he plans to go into this battle with his newly caught Twig, Dotler, Pikachu, and Farfetch. He wants to go in with his entire team. And he's doing pretty well, getting past the first and second round with ease. Now we go to Hop. Now Hop is doing really well due to the training he did in the wild area prior. He's gotten really more serious about battling and doesn't want to hold back. He doesn't want to lose to either Chase or Bead again. Speaking of Bead, he's doing phenomenally well, but he cannot get the eye of Chairman Rose, who's also there. Chairman Rose is focused on Hop and Chase and how well they're doing. So he pushes himself to do better, to win without even having their opponent move. All three trainers that we're focusing on make it to around the semifinals. Chase goes against Hop and Bead go against a random ace trainer, let's say. Chase does really well against Hop, but Hop is not giving him an inch. Hop is doing really well with his Cramorant, however, f however, Chase has Farfetch. Now, Farfetch is doing really well, and Farfetch has started to listen to Chase more as Chase has become better at battling and better at commanding his Pokemon. But Chase still has the issue of trying to copy Ash, and it almost causes him to loss. But due to Farfetch's incredibly brutal nature, they end up taking the win. Hop is really disappointed in himself and thought that he got a lot stronger. But he says that he'll just try, he'll, he'll train 10 times harder just to beat Chase again. Bead is doing incredibly well against the Ace Trainer and manages to beat him without no remorse. However, Chairman Rhodes can only talk about how good Chase is doing. This angers Bead, and he wants to absolutely destroy Chase in the finals. In the finals of this tournament, it goes as Bead wanted it to go, except for when Chase, dis except for when Turtwig decides to use Overgrow. Now, Overgrow, if you're not already familiar, is the starter abilities like Overgrow, Torn, and Blaze. They give the starter a little bit of boost if their HP is low, and with Overgrow, Turtwig's grass type moves become incredibly powered up and incredibly deadly. This makes the match way closer than Bead ever would have wanted it to be, and Bead only lost by a hair. And Chairman Rose comes to congratulate both trainers, but he says that Chase has come a long way, and he says good job Bead. Bead still gets the opportunity to fight Cynthia in a battle though. However, Chase's second place prize is a starter Pokemon from the Sinnoh region. This starter Pokemon being Chimchar. Now this Chimchar is very much like Ash's Sobble. It's very shy, super shy to the fact where it goes 
tries to go back in its Pokeball upon beating Chase, but Chase does eventually get it to warm up to it over a long period of time. Meanwhile, before the Cynthia battle, the girls are helping out with Don's contest booth, having contest battles, and they're kind of learning the rules, but it is a bit tricky. However, Elaine's taking this to heart. She thinks that she could implement this in her battling when it comes to gym battles. And that's what's really important. She's studying a lot and learning a lot from Dawn here. Now we can go to what Ash, Lucas, and Rinto are doing. While they were refereeing the tournament that the other boys were in, they're also helping out new trainers in Rowan's booth. Rowan's booth is focusing on new trainers and new beginnings. He's talking about starting your journey within the Sinnoh region and how it might look like. He offers new trainers rental Pokemon to start with. These Pokemon being Starly, Patsuritsu, Piplup, Chimchar, and Turtwig. Ash, Lucas, and Rinto are having battles with quotation mark against these new trainers, going a bit easier on them. They're actually using the rental Pokemon that were given to them by Rowan. Upon Lucas winning his battle, Rowan says his last name. He says that's just what I would expect from the heir to the Masterson fortune. Now this catches Rinto and Ash off guard as they didn't know Lucas's last name. Lucas basically explains that his family is famous for archaeological and training history. He's actually the cousin of Rourke. His father is a bit of an archaeologist and was the reason why the Sino Museum is so big that it is today. He's actually helping out Professor Rowan with the three Pokemon that he has, being Duat at this point, Dartrix, and Quilava, along with Rufflet. The two boys are incredibly interested in this, as Ash has always found science to be really cool, and Rinto, and Rinto revealing that he studied under the former champion Peony, has always found archaeological studies interesting. However, that's neither here nor there, and we can finally get to Bede versus Cynthia. Now, Bede thinks that he's going to have a pretty easy time, as he has a bunch of fairy types that are also psychic types. However, Cynthia is never one to take a loss winning down. Now, he, ex now he expects Cynthia to go with her trying and true Garchomp. However, Cynthia flips the script and instead goes with her Rose Raid, being part having a bunch of poison type moves. This catches Bede off guard, and he ends up losing in a way worse way than he was expecting. Instead of losing with dignity and showing everybody that he has the potential, he lost due to something that he didn't account for. And this just kind of sets him over the edge. He storms off. He knows that per he knows that Chairman Rose wants to achieve his goals as quickly as possible, and he knows that he has to be the one to do it. This is when we kind of get a look back into his past as he's talking to himself. B did come from an orphanage. Now, in this orphanage, they also had a school, and Chairman Rose did come to this school to offer somebody a scholarship and endorsement into the league. B performed the best out of all the kids there, and he's determined not to be forgotten like those other kids. He does not want to go back there. Now, we can go to the tent. Now, upon going back to the tent, Ash, Rinto, and Lucas only see the ball guy asking where Leon is as they wanted to talk to him before he left. The ball guy reveals himself to be Leon, and everyone is quite shocked in the room. Even Ash asks why Leon would ever do such a Leon basically explains to them that to look out some Leon explains that the guy that they usually get to go into the ball guy costume called out sick and they weren't able to get a replacement, so he had no problem doing it. However, everybody's still confused. Why would Leon do this? In fact, why have a huge festival like this? They could have easily just had the tournament and have everybody fight against Cynthia. Now, this is when Leon gets a bit more teacher-like. He actually explains why they do this. He inquires, but he inquires everybody there to look outside. Look at everybody having a good time. Just a yesterday, there was a huge crisis and everybody was worried. Now, everybody's chill like nothing ever happened. Ash even caught the Sandaconda that everybody was so worried about. This is what a champion's job is. The champion has to make sacrifices for the region to keep everybody happy. Sure, he could do a bunch of more tournaments, but at the same time, not everybody gets to enjoy the tournaments. Now everybody, trainer or not, can enjoy something. Even new trainers can learn. This is what he teaches Ash, Lucas, and Rinto here. Now we can finally... Now we can finally cut to Barry's booth, which is the last booth, being the Battle Frontier booth. Now Barry recommends one person from the audience take him on in a battle. This is when Rinto steps up to the field. Rinto saying that he always wanted to fight in the Battle Frontier and that the region he comes from doesn't really have one. 
Barry, cocky as ever, is glad to oblige him. Barry sends out sends out a Dragonair, explaining that this is a new Pokemon he caught. Rinto, incredib Rinto, incredibly cocky and believing in himself as well, sends out a Grovile. Ash, not knowing that Rinto even had a Grovile, Rinto says that he's full of surprises. The battle goes underway. Barry is using a lot of good moves and keeping Grovile on his feet, but due to Grovile being quite the speedy Pokemon, it isn't too far behind. Now this is when this is when Rinto uses his intellectual knowledge about type advantage against Barry's brash nature. Barry is a very attack kind of person, and he, but Rinto is the type of person to wait and attack precisely. Once Dragonair is all wearing out, that's when Grovile makes its move. It makes three solid strikes and ends up knocking out Dragonair. Rinto gets a kind of honorary Battle Frontier symbol. But he said that he still had a fun battle either way. Barry says his goodbyes to Ash as he has to make his way back to Sinnoh as he is still taking on the Battle Frontier and he hasn't finished it yet. Ash wishes Barry luck. Dawn says that she's going to stay one more night and Cynthia has to make her way back as well. However, before she makes her way back, she did promise Ash, Rinto, and Lucas for helping her out against a 3v1 battle. Now, everybody's excited to see this battle as they want to see if Cynthia can really beat three trainers at once, especially the three trainers being two league champions and a prodigy such as Rinto. Ash sends out his newly caught Drippy, Rinto sends out his Zwilus, and finally Lucas sends out his Duraludon. And Cynthia sends out her ace Garchomp. Now, Garchomp is doing a really good time on Zwilus as Zwilus has a typical thrashing nature, and that's kind of the antithesis to what Rinto is, but Rinto's not giving up. Duraludon comes with a flash cannon. It doesn't really phase Garchomp, but it did get its attention. This is where Dreepy comes in with its dragon type moves, being just on par with a Duraludon to the normal amounts of Dynamax energy that resides in him. Each trainer is putting in their all into this battle, however, Cynthia does manage to win due to her Garchomp's just sheer amount of power. But she still congratulates them all on a battle and says good things are in their future if they continue on the path that they're going on. Everybody's happy except Bede. Bede at this point realizes that he's being outclassed by not only three trainers, but slowly both Hop and Chase are going to outclass him. At this point, he's kinda lost it and he wants to fulfill the chairman's goals as quickly as possible. So he ends up going to the mural in Stowe Inside, taking a Kaparaja with him. Right before he can demolish the Kaparaja, he's stopped, and Chairman Rose is furious, saying that how could he deface Galar's history that is beneath him, not really not realizing how hypocritical he is as he was about to do the same thing days before. But he does revoke his endorsementship of Bede. Now, Bede is devastated at this point. Now, this is when Marnie and Elaine, believe it or not, try to stick up for Bede. However, Rose says that he also has the power to remove anybody from the league. And if you side with Bede, you are essentially removed from the league in its entirety. This gets a bunch of people to quiet up. Ash isn't there, so he can't do anything at this moment. But when he does eventually get there, he just sees Bede devastated and leaving the area. Everyone explains what happened to him, and Ash wishes he was there just so he might be able to convince Rose to let Bede be in it. Maybe Bede just made a bad choice. However, it's too late for that, and the next day they do have their gym battle to look forward to, so the team is focused on that. But before the gym battle, Ash and Don do have a training battle. This is against Sabo and Piplup. Now, Sabo is doing really well. He's gotten really confident and really good at his technique. Now, Piplup is no shy matter to how Pokemon are at their technique, using his contest moves as a way to kind of put Sabo off guard but Sobble's still having a fun time. Sobble's having such a fun time that it ends up evolving into Drizzile. Now, however, Drizzile, unlike the canon version, has its confidence back, but instead it gets even more confident using its move. But the problem is it can't move in the same way that it does. It's more of a long distance fighter now than it was as a Sobble, and that's why they lose. So Ash's arc with Drizzle will be to learn how to use its new body and its new move set, rather than its confidence. Dawn says that she's proud of Ash for still catching new Pokemon and making new friends, but she has to go because she wanted to explore more of the Galar region before she left. And now it is the next day, and the gym battles are about to get underway. However, while Elaine's gym battle is going on against B, Chase wanted to battle against Alistair as he thought 
that it would be an easy win. However, Alistair has noticed something about Chase. Chase really likes to copy Ash. I've said this multiple times. And Elaine and Alistair points that out, saying that he should find his own battle style, as that's what he does best in as he's watched his recordings. However, Chase says that he has his own battle style. And while Alistair agrees on that, he's not showing it off well. This is when Chase kind of gets mad. Chase says that if he wins, he has if he wins, Alistair has to take off that mask. However, Alistair says if he wins, that means Chase can no longer use Ash's battle style. And their battle goes underway right after. Their battle is incredibly dynamic and re and really fun to see. The ghost typing really flips up Chase, and he has to really think on his feet here. However, his newly caught Chimchar actually makes a difference. Chimchar using its fire type moves actually ends up clinching the line, and Chase is able to take away the victory. Alistair does reveal his mask only to Chase, but Chase still th thinks what Alistair said does have some truth to it, as he will try to find more unique ways to implement his own battle style with this his current battle style. Next up is Ash vs. Bead. You know, after I saw you fight Kabu in the Unite tournament, I've been really excited to fight you. I choose you, Hitmontop. I hope I don't lay you down. Dreepy, I choose you! And it's super dynamic as a start. The battle is incredible going to the midway point as Pangoro and Corvusquire clash with each other. Pangoro, use Night Slash. Alright Corvusquire, keep it coming! Use Air Slash! Dang it! I didn't know they were that close to a tie. Type advantage isn't everything. Go Machamp! Time for my secret weapon to make his move. Santaconda, I choose you! What? That's right. I was able to tame Santaconda's insane power and figured out how to use it. This gym battle would be the perfect time to test it. Oh, and then we get to the fever pitch endpoint. Both po both trainers, Gigantamax or Pokemon, being Machamp for Santaconda, and the Pokemon clash. Ash, you're full of surprises. That battle was fantastic. You earned this badge. Thanks. I had a blast battling you too. After Ash ends up beating Bead, B, B basically tells Ash to head to Glimwood Tangle as that's where the next gym is. But she says beware the gym leader as she can be kind of eccentric. Alistair agrees with her and the team is on their way off to this next battle. Ash plans to use Drizzle there as he thinks that they can really determine their new battle style over there. And that ends episode and that ends the newest episode of Pokemon Swing Shield series. Thanks for watching guys. I'll be sure to make an episode next week, hopefully, about the Glimwood Tango stuff and following up about how the crew feels about Bead. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a bit longer than the usual ones that I do because I had to fit two kind of episodes in one. So uh thanks for watching. Samurai out.